Hello everyone, my name is Winona, grateful believer in Jesus Christ. I'm also the leader of Busted Knuckles, which is the adult recovery ministry out of Roadhouse Biker Church, which is in San Bernardino, California. We have a great devotional today, which we always do because all these devotionals are based on scripture. They're based on God's word. And so today we are in the book of Second Chronicles, and I'm going to be reading to you basically all of chapter 15. It's 1 through 19. And But before we get started, I'd like to um, say the serenity prayer. I am really finding that, that the serenity prayer and step six go hand in hand. Because in the serenity prayer, you know, we're praying to be able to accept the things we can't change, do the things that we can change, but realize that the, there's a difference. There are some things that we just have no control over. And so in step six, we are asking God to remove these defects of character. That means we have to change. And so asking him to do that requires some courage, honest to goodness. We have to have the courage to be willing and able to allow him to make that change in us. So let's, uh, let's, let's say the serenity prayer before we get started. It goes like this, God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Living one day at a time, enjoying one moment at a time, accepting hardship as the pathway to peace, and taking as Christ did the sinful world as it is, not as I would have it, trusting that he will make all things right if I surrender to his will. That I may be reasonably happy in this world and supremely happy with him forever in the next. Amen. So, you know, it takes it takes wisdom, it takes courage to see the things that we can change, to accept the fact that there's some that we can't. But that's what that serenity prayer is all about. And so, let me read the scripture to you. Like I said, it is Second Chronicles, and I'm starting in chapter 15, and it's about King Asa. Then the Spirit of God came upon Azariah, son of Oded, and he went to meet King Asa as he was returning from battle. Listen to me, Asa, he shouted. Listen, all you people of Judah and Benjamin. The Lord will stay with you as long as you stay with him. Whenever you seek him, you will find him, but if you abandon him, he will abandon you. For a long time, Israel was without the true God, without a priest to teach him, and without the law to instruct them. But whenever they were in trouble and turned to the Lord, the God of Israel, and sought him out, they found him. He's never lost. You know, that's, it's so funny when people say, yeah, I found God. Well, you know, he was never lost. He was standing right there waiting for you. You were the lost one. You were the one that was found. Okay, let me continue. During these dark times, it was not safe to travel. Problems troubled the people of every land. Nation fought against nation and city against city. For God was troubling them with every kind of problem. But as for you, be strong and courageous, for your work will be rewarded. When Israel heard this message from Azariah the prophet, he took courage, and he removed all the detestable idols from the land of Judah and Benjamin and in the towns that he had captured in the hill countries of Ephraim. He repaired the idol, I'm sorry, he repaired the altar of the Lord, which stood in front of the entry room of the Lord's temple. Then Asa called, people, called together all the people of Judah and Benjamin, along with the people of Ephraim, Manasseh, and Simeon, who had settled among them. For many from Israel had moved to Judah during Asa's reign when they saw that the Lord his God was with him. The people gathered at Jerusalem in the late spring during the 15th year of Asa's reign. On, the day they sat, on that day they sacrificed to the Lord 700 cattle and 7,000 sheep and goats from the plunder that they had taken in battle. Then they entered into a covenant to seek the Lord the God of their ancestors, with all their heart and soul. They agreed that anyone who refused to seek the Lord, the God of Israel, would be put to death, whether young or old, man or woman. They shouted out their oath of loyalty to the Lord with trumpets blaring and ram, ram's horns sounding. All in Judah were happy about this covenant, for they had entered into it with all their heart. All their heart. They earnestly sought after God, and they found him, and the Lord gave them rest from their enemies on every side. 
King Asa even disposed his grandmother, which is basically, I believe it was his actually his mother. I think in Hebrew, grandmother meant their mother. Um, disposed his grandmother, Makah, from her position as queen mother because she had made an obscene Asherah pole. He cut down her obscene pole, broke it up, and burned it in the, burned it in the Kidron Valley. Although the, the pagan shrines were not removed from Israel, Asa's heart remained completely faithful throughout his life. He brought into the temple of God the silver and gold and the various items that he and his father had dedicated. So there was no more war until the 30th, the 35th year of Asa's reign. So King Asa realized that he needs to turn to God. And when he did, he removed all the idols that all of the Israelites in Judah and Benjamin, and they had been worshiping these idols. And they realized that they can't do this anymore. So it says here about this, God is a forgiving God. Remember that. No matter how deep the sin of sin upon the people, I'm sorry. No matter how deep the stain of sin upon the people of Israel, God forgave them when they chose to repent. They may have failed so often that they believe they were beyond the point of God's forgiveness and care. If you wholeheartedly, with your whole heart, you've asked for forgiveness, it will be given. There's no sin that stains so bad that it can't be washed as white as snow. It is never too late to turn to God. When we cry out for help, he will respond with restoration and forgiveness. Then he will give us the courage to deal with the problems that are faced that we face that are before us. Amen. So let me read in the Life Recovery Devotional. That's this book right here. It is step six and we are day 14. And it's called Courage to Change. There comes a point in recovery when we need to face ourselves. We need to acknowledge the wrongs that we committed and the harm that we've brought because of our slavery. It takes courage to make the preparations necessary to allow God to change our lives and the relationships in ways that are supporting our recovery. King Asa was a man who lived at a time when the people of Israel had given themselves over to the worship of idols. They had turned away from God in the way of life that they knew, they knew to be right. So a messenger of God told the king, the Lord will stay with you as long as you stay with him. Whenever you seek him, you will find him. But if you abandon him, he will abandon you. When Asa heard this message, he took courage and removed all the detestable idols from the land. And he repaired the altar of the Lord. And again, the reading was 2 Chronicles 15. Asa even removed his mother from her position of power because she had become influential in Israel's idolatry. Allowing God to remove all our defects of character, it takes courage. Because the changes he makes in us is going to affect every, every aspect of our lives. The time will come when we need to crush and burn the idols that we've served, to go against the crowd, and to make a commitment to God, and even to separate ourselves from those people who do not contribute to your recovery. When we do these things, we will find that the Lord will be there with us, encouraging us as we set things straight. Stay in contact with people who love God and you will find the courage to change. So you do want to surround yourself with God-fearing people, especially as you're walking in this recovery. When you go to your recovery meetings, your groups and what have you, you'll find that, that strength in numbers with other folks that are, are, are walking the same path of recovery that you are. You can find strength in that, but you want to stay I want to say with positive people, but it's people that are positive in their walk with God. Okay? So you want to take advantage, you know, because it, as we were reading the scripture, when the people turned back to God, God gave them rest on every side from their enemies. It, you know? And so take advantage of that rest on every side. You want to build up your defenses. It teaches you how to, how to withstand those spiritual attacks. Decisions about how to face temptations must be made with a cool head long before we feel the heat of temptation. So build up your defenses now before temptation strikes. So when you are making those changes, you're, you're going to come up with a game plan 
that's going to help you whenever that temptation strikes again, you're going to be able to, to turn away from it because God is giving you that wisdom to, to stand up to these things. You know, and if that does mean that you're cutting yourself off, as he had to get rid of his mom, she, she was no longer queen, you know, he, she was queen. I can't remember what they called her now, I'm sorry. But he had to get rid of her because she was still worshiping the idols. As he was getting rid of the idols, burning them in the Kidron Valley, he took down her Ishtar pole, burned that. He made a big change. He had that courage to change and follow God. And that's what we need. We need to have that courage, you know, that, that guttural fortitude to say, yes, God, I'm willing and I'm ready for you to remove these these defects of character. <laughs> I hate that word, defects. But these character flaws are something that we've had for a long time. It takes time to get rid of them. But once you get that courage and and the strength to start removing them from your life, you'll find that, that your life is going so much easier. You don't have the chaos and, and the division that you have. And if there are people that you have to cut off from your life because they are not positive in your recovery, then do it. Then do it. Maybe as, as you get stronger in your recovery, if there's some amends or what have you that need to be made with those people, take it at that time. But right now you're working on you and your recovery. And if that's what is necessary, then please have that courage to do it. You're going to feel sad. You're going to actually grieve some of these friendships that you've had to cut loose but it's a good grief and it says scripturally you know cry about these things these things as you have to give up mourn them they were part of your life and so you feel free to mourn and cry over some of these relationships as you're growing in your relationship with Christ amen so hey you guys God bless you Remember that serenity prayer. Look it up. Look up the full serenity prayer. I would encourage you to print it up. Carry it in your wallet. Whenever you're feeling things are kind of out of control, stop, quiet yourself, and just recite that serenity prayer. It, it tends to, when we do quiet ourselves and we start talking to our Father, it puts us in a whole different mindset. Our heart changes. That, that guilt, that shame, maybe it's anger, resentment, some bitterness or what have you, road rage, it, it seems to just kind of dissipate. All right, so you guys have a great day today. God bless.